When we return, Sheriff's Deputy Doug Eddington comes within seconds of dying on duty. We'll be right back with more Top Cops. Now, Sheriff's Deputy Doug Eddington, a cop with time on his side. When I started with the Sheriff's Office, I was assigned to corrections, working in our main jail. Then I applied and was transferred to the street. When I was first out on patrol, it was kind of exciting and a little overwhelming. But it can also be a humbling feeling. Fighting crime isn't a game. It's for real. There's no room for error. I grew up in Grove City, a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, the biggest small town in America. Hey, Doug, you got the time? 3.45. You guys doing okay this morning? Better as we can be for 3 in the morning. The pace here is easy. It's hometown America. Not as cosmopolitan as New York, and even more laid back than Cleveland. Coffee! Not so loud. You sleeping? Resting my eyes. Preparing for the busy night ahead. I think it's quiet now. Wait until it snows. We're going to get snow? Anytime. Actually, I love snow. See, it makes the roads real crummy, but hey, keeps those burglars home at night. So what do you got up for the weekend? Got any time off? Yeah, even got a blind date for tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, no. How did you get yourself roped into that? Hey. I've been waiting to meet this girl since last October. I hear she is really something. Good luck. I sort of became a cop by accident. I used to be a fireman, and I just wanted to be an auxiliary officer. But a sergeant gave me the full-timers application and had a talk with me. And when I found out there was a significant pay difference between fighting fires and fighting crime, I took the deputy job. But once I got my feet wet, it stopped being a job, and I kind of felt like I had found my calling. Attention car, zone three, respond to silent alarm, possible break-in, 1500 Demarest, the Moose Lodge. What's that you were saying about snow? There's got to be five guys between us and the Moose Lodge. Yeah, well, let's advise them we're on route. At least it's something to do. One Adam 35, I am 33 to code 10, the units at the Moose Lodge. Adam 31, en route as well. On the drive over, I had a hunch that these guys had been timing us. The week before, the same day, at the same time, we had the same kind of alarm go out. That time, we lost them in a nearby wooded area. So whoever these guys were, they were back. They knew what they were after, and they knew what they were doing. Fortunately for us, they didn't know about the silent alarm. Detective Glenn Goldsberry met us when we pulled up. We're in a main floor office. Get around front quick as you can. Block the door. No. So what do you got? I got two perps in an office. All right. Check it out. I'll block the back door. Get it, buddy. No doubt about it, these guys were on a mission, but they had zero finesse. I could tell by the way they were muscling the door off that safe. They weren't going to be there much longer. We had to move fast. Almost got the door off. You want to go in or wait for them to come out? No, no, we'll wait. Look, you two watch the window. Let us know which way to come. Okay, come on. Wait. Bobby was in there all alone. I just couldn't let that happen. I had to get in there. Sam? Doug? Where are the others? Door's closed. Nobody can get in. There's nobody back here. This way. Let's go. We started to check out the building using an anvil-type tactic, moving forward, trying to put them into a corner. Let's go. Over there. Police! Freeze! Burglars in our area. 
area seldom carry guns, so I really didn't expect these guys to be armed. Fortunately, we're trained for it. Doug, sounds like they're coming back this way. Be careful, right? We got as far as the main hall. Bobby peeled off to check a pool room. Then I saw them, to my left, about 50 feet away. Freeze! Police! I had never been involved in a shooting. During my eight years with the department, I had only been to shootouts after the fact. Anytime I talked to guys who were in a gunfight, they'd always say, everything goes in slow motion. I never really understood what they meant until then. It's no lie. I mean, everything went into super slow motion. I saw a flash with a dark ring in the middle of it. Then I felt the hit. I immediately returned fire. scared to death. I wouldn't even look at my wrist. Don't move. Oh. Wait a minute. I got it in the wrist. Okay, easy. I was moving my fingers around to make sure everything was still working. I kept waiting for that warm, sticky feeling you get when you're bleeding. But I couldn't feel it. And I couldn't figure out why. Oh, man, you were one lucky son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, and why is that? Well, look at your wrist. Watch. Jeez. Glad they didn't hit mine. I got a Rolex. <laughs> Everybody all right? Doug. Yeah. Unless you want to know what time it is. <laughs> I'm also a rescue diver, so I wear a diver's watch. It's thicker than your average watch, and that's what helped save my life. Another inch lower, and it would have hit me right above my heart. I made my blind date that next night, and it turned out great. We were engaged a few months later and married the following year. When I was issued my weapon, the first thing that went through my mind was, can I really use this thing? Am I going to be able to shoot somebody and live with it? These are the big questions each cop asks himself. Well, I had just answered them. Now I know I can handle a situation like that. It made me a better officer. We'll be right back with tonight's Top Cops and the aftermaths of their stories. Matthew Craven was convicted of assault and jailed in an Ohio penitentiary. His baby girl was unharmed. Lieutenant John Kosek received a commendation from his department, one of more than 100 he earned during his career, and the Silver Star for Bravery from the Police Hall of Fame. Recently retired, he now serves with the Cleveland Metro Parks Police. The Operation Home Free program is now in its seventh year. So far, over 45,000 children have been safely returned to their homes. Richard Voorhees was promoted to chief of the Bridgewater, New Jersey Police Department in 1987, a position he still holds. He was also named Police Officer of the Year by Parade Magazine and the International Association of Chiefs of Police. Arnold Thornton and Arthur Lohr were convicted of burglary and felonious assault and sentenced to 7 to 25 years. Deputy Doug Eddington received the Medal of Valor and the Purple Heart and was presented with a new watch from a local jeweler to replace the one that saved his life. He continues to serve in Franklin County, Ohio. Top